What do you use, Sunita? Thank you so much, Alan. Appreciate it. Welcome everybody to disaster relief loan updates for PPP and COVID idle only today. I know usually we go through many more um, COVID related uh, or disaster related uh, loans, but today we're just gonna really focus on this. Um, I wanted to let you know that there is another webinar at 11 o'clock that it goes over all of the grant information for California. So you can jump onto that Alan, we'll put that in the chat. So if you wanted to link up to that and watch that later, those are also recorded. So if you needed to watch it a little bit later on, you can get that information as well. So thank you so much. Welcome. And we're gonna jump into it today. So this is provided to you by the Northern California SBDC. We are supported by the SBA in the state of California and that's how we're able to provide you no fee advising for small businesses. We at the Finance Center, we focus on finance, but we have other centers as well all throughout Northern California and actually through California, because I know some people from Northern or Southern California do join us. Your local centers can be reached at um, Americas, SBDC, uh, org, I believe it is. We'll double check on that, sorry. Um, but that's where you can find your most local center. And you can also, if you're in the Northern California area, ask sbdc.com to find your near, nearest uh, SBDC center. I am Sunita Maharaj, you've seen me here many times and you may have not seen Steve Roth. He is part of our team at the Finance Center and it's a pleasure to have him here today. He is gonna be answering a lot of the questions in the Q&A. If there's multiple questions that are the same, uh, we will answer it once and then click off and say answered um, throughout this. All your questions should be located in the Q&A. If you have any uh, tech assistance you need, you can put that in chat. But thank you again. Thanks for being here today. Um, let's jump into it. We're gonna go into a disclaimer and then housekeeping. Actually, I just went over some of the housekeeping and then into the agenda. This is being recorded today and it will be shared with you via email. Also, the deck will be shared with you too. So don't worry about that. It's, I believe Alan will put it in the chat, but you will get a copy of this. So don't need, you don't need to worry about that. If you have questions, please put it in the Q&A. Um, if there is a question that you see multiple times and that's your same question, please hit the like button or the thumbs up button. And then that will push it to the top to make sure that we're able to uh, answer that. If you need technical assistance, please go to the chat and Alan will be able to help you there. Um, Disclaimer, this information was correct when the presentation was created pretty much last night and this morning. As you know, we try to get the most up-to-date information and this is for um, information only. If you need one-on-one -on -one assistance, please give us a call at 833-ASSVDC or at loans at assvdc.com. Here are the agenda today updates, the PPP. We're gonna go over a little bit about number one or the, the initial PPP and then PPP two. We're gonna go over some idle questions, SBA relief, uh, debt relief, shuttered venue operations grant. Uh, the webinar is tomorrow at noon. Alan will place that information into the chat so that way you have it. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of information on that for you today. SBA might have some, but there'll be more information tomorrow. So I apologize if that's the reason why you're here today. Um, I don't have much information for you, but we will have more next week. Uh, the SBA team will be here and they'll answer some questions or give as many updates as they can. And we're gonna go over upcoming webinars and then we're gonna go straight into Q&A, but we always answer Q&A through the chat, or sorry, through the Q&A um, during this whole session. So we're gonna jump into PPP versus idle. So of course, PPP is forgivable. There could be a 1% fixed rate interest for the amount that's not forgivable. Uh, it is a two to five year term. PPP two will be a five year term if it ends up being a loan. Uh, the use of funds are for payroll costs, mortgage interest, rent and utility expenses. Um, you can apply through an approved SBA lender. There's a lot of questions right now, so I'm just going to go ahead and answer that question. Do we have a list of lenders right now that are uh, 
accepting PPP two or one applications. We do not. Uh, I believe I heard on a call this morning, the SBA portal is currently not open, but people are accepting applications. We just don't have a list yet. Um, we have a couple of banks that have reached out to us or one actually to let us know that they're accepting applications, but they cannot yet submit it to SBA. So please hang on. As soon as we do get that information, like we have in the past, we will provide it to you. But I know the number one question is, who is accepting PPP2 loans? One of the other things, advice that we have is to go back to your original lender. Uh, hopefully you had a good experience with that lender. Um, and if you didn't, then hopefully there is another one out there that we will be able to, or others out there that we'll be able to give you a list, hopefully by next week. So for idle, uh, idle is not forgivable. It is a loan and it's at 3.5% interest for profits and for nonprofits at 2.5%. It is a 30 year term. If you decided you wanted to pay it off earlier than that, you can without any penalties. Uh, the use of funds is for working capital, inventory, fixed debt payments, and all other normal business expenses. Um, if you needed to pay your payroll through that, you can. You just can't use your PPP money and your idle money at the same time to pay the same things. Uh, you can apply directly through SBA for this. So idle loan is through the SBA, PPP is through a lender. Uh, you will need a uh, collateral for over for loans over twenty five thousand and a personal guarantee from all business owners that have twenty percent or more interest in the company. Let's jump into the Paycheck Protection Program. The eligibility requirements for PPP two it is not the same as the initial PPP. So let's review this. Um, hopefully, uh, and like I said, this information will be sent to you. The deck is here, so if you'd like to write down some notes, you can, but this information will be provided to you. So the maximum loan amount for PPP2 is $2 million. Uh, before, it was the $10 million, I believe, uh, but PPT, PPP2 is $2 million max loan amount. You cannot have more than 300 employees which is different from the previous, which is 500 employees. So 300 employees for PPP2. 25% reduction in gross receipts between comparable quarters in 2019 and 2020. So maybe your first quarter in 2019 and your first quarter in 2020, or pro most likely your second quarters is where it's really gonna show up. So that's what they're looking at. It has to be that quarter. Um, have, and they have to be comparable. Same quarter, second quarter from 2019, second quarter from 2020. Previously received uh, first draw PPP loan will has to be used up. So you will have you will use it up, or you uh, has been used up before you can get a PPP two. Um, must have been in business as of February 15th, 2020. That's a hard date. I know that on different um, disaster loans, uh, they have hard dates and this is also a hard date. Uh, application second draw, it opens, it opened up on the 13th, which is today. Um, and we'll provide additional information for you on that because I know people are still looking for lenders that are gonna be able to do that. And SBA may have some more insight on that. The application second draw right there, that is a hyperlink. So if you get this information or this deck, you can click on it and you may have to control and then click on it to be able to get to that hyperlink. But that is where that's at. So I've given you a copy of the application second draw. Forgiveness terms. Uh, the loan proceeds are spent on payroll costs and other eligible expenses, which is similar to what we've been talking about all these months. So at least 60% of the proceeds are spent on payroll costs. This has not changed from the last. Uh, so it is exactly the same. The 60-40 is still taken into an account. Employee and compensation levels are maintained in the same manner as required for the first PPP loan draw. For loans under 150,000, uh, there will be a simple one-page forgiveness form, which is not currently available yet. 
We are hoping it's going to be available soon. I don't know what the date is. SBA may have some more insight, but um, it is forthcoming. So the 60-40 uh, split still applies for both the new PPP and the second PPP loans. Forgiveness terms. Businesses must commit to maintaining an average monthly number of full-time equivalent FTEs. You'll see that on the forgiveness application. Uh, equal or above the average number of FTE employees during the first uh, during the previous one year period. The amount that can be forgiven will be reduced if the proportion to any reduction in the number of employees is retained if any wages were reduced by 25%. The safe harbor, sorry, I should have put safe harbor underneath this um, as another point. Safe harbor rules are still in effect. So if you click on this link, it'll show you exactly, it'll go into a webinar and it'll go through the safe harbor and what safe harbor means and how it can be used. We've talked about safe harbor before, it still applies to PPP too. Say you were shut down Everyone is shut down right now in uh, the Sacramento area. They can't open, restaurants can't open. It's only uh, to go. So they don't have that many employees. Well, that's part of the safe harbor rules. Um, and then your reduction would be okay. And we can walk through each business. Uh, we have one-on-one -on -one, uh, counselors that can walk, through, walk you through this because it is a bit confusing and we definitely get that. How do you calculate your new loan? So borrowers can calculate their uh, aggregate payroll costs using data either from their previous 12 months or from calendar year 2019. This gets a, lot of, a little confusing too, but at the bottom of this, I do have a link to how to calculate your loan amount per your different um, uh, business entities. So if you're 1065, if you are a sole prop, you know, things like that, it shows you exactly how to calculate it and it's straight from SBA. So for seasonal businesses, you may use average monthly payroll between the period of February 12th, 2019 to March 1st, 2019 and June 30th, 2019. An applicant that was not in business from February 15th, 2019 to June 30th, 2019, may use the average monthly payroll cost for the period of January 1st through February 29th of 2020. And there is a hyperlink here, like I said, to for you to assist you to calculate that correctly for your particular business type. So PPP2 second round draw limitations. The maximum second PPP loan amount is the lesser of 2.5 times the average monthly payroll costs, um, healthcare costs in the year prior to when the loan was received or within the calendar year, which this is similar to what it was previously. But if you are in, um, if your business is coded under number 72, uh, then you will be able to do 3.5 times the average monthly uh, payroll costs. Number 72, uh, that is a hyperlink. So it goes off of each business that is under 72 um, for your Nexus code. Click on that, find your business. Hopefully it is under your, that is under your business and it's gonna be at 3.5 times. Uh, again, the maximum loan amount is $2 million. So eligible costs for payroll um, for your PPP, salary, wage, commission, or similar compensation, payment of cash tips or equivalent, vacation, uh, parental, family, medical, and sick leaves, uh, dismissal or separation. So say you had to let somebody go during this time. Uh, that amount you could use, you could use your PPP to pay them out their vacation to, um, you know, whatever, whatever is left to pay them their last paycheck, you could use that, you could use your PPP funds for that. Group health benefits, including employer insurance premiums. I want to emphasize employer because it's not the employee portion, it is the employer portion. So you as the business owner's portion. Uh, retirement benefits, state and local tax for payroll, state and local, not federal. Uh, allowable uses of proceeds, um, payroll costs, 
payment of interest on mortgage obligation, and this is the 40%, rent, utilities, additional uses on next page. So the eligible cost for payroll, which is the 60%, and then the 40% is the, all the other allowable uses of the proceeds. You can use all of it towards payroll, but you can't use all of it for um, other allowable uses of proceeds if you want it to be forgiven in full. Additional eligible expenses. This is new to the PPP2, uh, covered operation expenditures. So payment for any software, cloud computing, and other human resources and accounting needs. Uh, covered property damage costs. Costs related to property damage due to public disturbances that occurred during 2020 that are not covered by your insurance. Covered supplier costs, expenditures to a supplier pursuant to a contract, purchase order, or other order for goods in effect prior to taking out the loan that are essential to your business operation. Covered worker protection expenditures, so your PPP, PPEs, personal protective equipment, and adaptive investments to help a loan recipient comply with federal health safety guidance or any equivalent state and local guidance. So these are all new to allowable um, costs that you can use your PPP loan to. So previous PPP loans can also claim these costs as covered expenses pending the 60% rule um, as long as the uh, loan has been uh, not already been forgiven. If your loan has already been forgiven, then you don't have to worry about this. Um, Sorry that this we didn't have this information prior to this, but this just became law just within the last couple of weeks. So this is something new too. This has been something very confusing to all of us. Question, I believe that was asked multiple times during these 74 sessions, taxes and deductions. So expenses made um, with forgiven sorry, not made, but paid, expenses paid with forgiven PPP loan proceeds can be deducted from taxes. I know we were giving out other advice previously, but this is now written in law, so it can be deducted from taxes. It had to have been forgiven, so forgiven PPP loan. That's the other caveat, so please look at that. So the gross income um, a business is required to report will not include any PPP loan amounts that is forgiven. So PPP loan amounts that is forgiven. Uh, not taxable as income as well and, deduct and deductions are allowed are for the PPP forgiven funds, idle grants, and certain loan payment assistance and grants for shuttered venues. So this is also new. Here's some additional PPP uh, updates. This is big. Uh, this is really big because I know we've gone through this and it's been a heartache for a lot of us because it's we just didn't understand why it would be written this way. So idle advance will not be reduced from forgivable PPP amount. Uh, applies to existing borrowers as well. Um, but we are waiting on the process for those that have already applied for forgiveness. How this is gonna work. Um, there's no step-by-step -step instructions yet. Uh, we're hoping that they will come in the next couple of weeks. Um, but uh, I think the best person to reach out to would probably be your lender, but give them a little time as well to kind of figure this out because I don't believe the, the um, instructions uh, have been given to the lenders yet. So it clarifies covered period will be between eight and 24 weeks. Uh, clarifies other group insurance such as vision and dental are eligible for PPP expenses. I guess that was an issue. Some people didn't believe that vision and dental were included, but they are indeed included. Required documents for PPP. Keep all and any documents related to your PPP spending, payroll related costs, employee benefits, utilities, rent, mortgage interest, and if you're purchasing PPP, PPEs, any of those things are now allowable, please keep your receipts and please keep them for four years. Um, I was saying five, but I guess it's four, so four years. And uh, the PPP forgiveness applications, except for the 150 and under, 
Um, you can find it here at this hyperlink under applications can be found at sba.gov. Now I'm going to give it over to uh, Steve just in time. Um, so Steve, please uh, go ahead and take it over for the idle COVID updates. Sure. So <clears throat> good news. Uh, the idle program was extended all the way until the end of 2021. Uh, the idle advance program has been reinstated, but it's a little different than it was before. And if you've been denied the idle loan for any reason, you have up to six months to apply for reconsideration. Change. Next slide. Can someone move the slide forward? Sorry, I did. Can you not see the next slide? Oh, there we go. Thanks. Idle Thank advance. You. So the idle advance, Congress allocated $20 billion for idle advances. It's a part of the overall program and part of the $900 billion you hear about. It's just a special allocation for the idle advance. However, it's really for businesses that are located in low-income communities can receive up to $10,000. So if you've already received an idle advance in the first round of idle, and you only, and you, in the first round of idle, you got $1,000 per employee, up to a maximum of $10,000 or 10 employees. So if you were a sole proprietor with one employee, you got $1,000. If you got three employees, you got $3,000 for your idle advance. You can now reapply for idle if you already were funded and ask for up to $10,000 in the idle advance, but it's only for people in low income communities and in specific census tracts. So you can apply, you'll do that through the SBA directly uh, and the SBA will figure out what census tract you're in and whether it meets the requirements for the new law. Uh, it also, again, as, uh, as Sunita said a little bit ago, in the original law, the idle advance acted as a deduction from your PPP forgiveness. But under the new law, they have completely separate programs. So if you had a um, PPP loan of $10,000 and idle advance of $1,000, the $1,000 idle advance has no impact on the forgiveness for the $10,000 PPP loan, which is great. So you don't have to worry about these two things being tagged together. And you can get a larger idle advance if you live in certain census tracts. Next one. So the definition of low income is naturally complicated. Uh, it has to do with the low income community means any population census tract if the poverty rate for such a tract is at least 20%. Now, none of us know exactly what every census tract in California is or how it, how it interacts. There is a census tool tab at the bottom of this page, and you can use that to look up your tract. But when you do, you'll just find out where you live. It won't actually tell you any of the details. So I talked with the SBA today, and they're gonna do this internally. So when you apply, they know where you live. They'll be able to look at your census tract and then they'll tell you whether or not you qualify. You also have, uh, you have to take a look at the, the tract. If it's, if it's not located in a metropolitan area, it's rural, then the median family income for the tract can exceed 80% of the statewide median family income, which is again, something nobody here knows and none of us will ever find out. Uh, but, you know, it just says if you live in a rural area, the rural area has to have an income level that's below the statewide median. So if you're living, if you're living in an exclusive neighborhood somewhere up in Lake Tahoe, you're probably not going to apply. If you're living in a rural community, though somewhere out, out in farming country, you probably will qualify for the program. But again, the SBA is going to is going to handle this on the back end. You'll apply; they'll let you know whether you meet the criteria, which is good. Next slide. 
Uh, the other part of the CARES Act program, which is really very good for everybody, is there are three separate kinds of debt relief available. So if you're a current borrower of an SBA loan and you got the loan prior to the CARES Act, you can receive up to an additional three months of deferred principal and interest payments starting in February of this year, next month. All you really have to do is ask your lender. Your lender will process this for you. This is, this is true for all lenders, regardless of the loan, the bank, whatever it might be. So if you do want to defer your principal and interest for three months, beginning next month, ask your lender this month, January, uh, for the deferral so they have a little bit of time to put it through. This is not a forgiveness. It's simply a deferral. The three months of principal and interest will be added on to the back end of your current loan. So if your loan was gonna end in four years, it now ends in four years and three months. But it does create some flexibility you know, in the short term while we're all being vaccinated. Uh, if you're an underserved borrower, uh, namely in the smallest, hardest hit areas, you can receive another five months of deferrals for a total of eight months. So again, if you're if you're operating a bar, a restaurant, a hotel, you know, uh, an industry that's been significantly impacted by COVID, or you're in an area that's been extremely hard hit, you can apply to your lender for eight months worth of deferrals. And again, your lender will decide with the SBA whether you're an underserved borrower that the SBDC doesn't get involved. If you do get a new loan. Uh, beginning in 2021, then the first six months of newly approved loans will resume the deferral uh, between February and September. So if you apply for an SBA loan today and if you're granted the loan on February 1st or March 1st, then you won't have any principal or interest payments to make until after September of 2021. It is capped at $9,000 a month so it's going to be best for smaller loans, for smaller lenders, but that's the idea behind the law. So you do have three ways to get some debt relief for existing loans and new loans. If you have an existing loan, everyone automatically qualifies the three months of deferrals. If you're an underserved borrower in a hard hit area, you can get another five months for a total of eight. And if you take out a new SBA loan, which we obviously think is a good idea, then you can get the first six months on the loan deferred. Uh, so it's really a great program for everyone involved. Next slide. <clears throat> uh, there are several loan enhancements under the, under the plan. Uh, you know, you can get $2 billion for existing SBA government loan programs, uh, 7A program, the 504 program, the micro loan program all have additional capital. Uh, any fees for new loans are waived. So if you do get a new SBA loan, not only would the principal and interest be deferred for six months, but your fees to the SBA, not to the bank, just the SBA would be waived. The bank will have its own fees for making loans but the SBA fees will be waived. Uh, it increases the 7A loan guarantee to 90%. Typically the SBA loan guarantee is about 75%. So it makes SBA backed loans more attractive for lenders and it should, be, it should open capital to small businesses. <clears throat> uh, the SBA express loan program, which is specifically for smaller loans to earlier stage at smaller companies has been increased to $1 million from 350,000. So there's more capital available for smaller companies. Each loan is underwritten by, by the lender itself. The 504 Express Loan Program allows the 504 lending community called Community Development Corporation, CDCs, a great deal of latitude in making loans of under $500,000 with minimal approval from the SBA, which means that if you are looking at doing a real estate loan and your 504 portion of it is 500,000 or less, your 504 lender has a great deal of discretion 
in making the loan without, without additional approvals, which means they can get loans closed in one to two weeks rather than a normal cycle time of four weeks to six weeks. So it puts more money into real estate lending faster under the new law. I think it's a very good, it's a very good law. Uh, and it also enhances the microloan program uh, by providing additional technical assistance for COVID-19. So there are a lot of elements to, to the new package, the second round of PPP, uh, idle being extended, the idle advance being allowed up to $10,000 for people who got an idle advance before. There's no second idle loan. You only get one idle loan, but you can get a second idle advance if you meet the criteria. Next one. I think I'll go back to Sunita. Thank you so much. Appreciate that, Steve. Um, let me see if- uh, Everyone's totally confused, I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure, I, it is very confusing. I saw a lot of the questions in, in uh, the Q&A is about the grant. Unfortunately, we cannot answer any grant questions here. I know there's issues with the portal and I'm very sorry, but please go to the other webinar and they'll be able to answer some of those questions and also show you tips and tricks on how you are able to upload your documents. That webinar is in the chat and Alan will put it again right now. So that Just way if you wanted to jump off you can, uh, if that is really, you know, uh, what you need to do at this point in time, please do so. Um, I don't know if Carrie has been able to join us uh, yet, but I know that David Castaneda is here from SBA. Um, he will give us some information in regards to what's coming up, but I'm hoping that uh, Carrie is here to give us any updates that SBA has that we haven't already gone over. I'm here, Sunita. Oh, oh, great. Good to good. see you. Sorry, <laughs> my screen, I can only perfect see timing. more people. So yes, perfect timing. Great to see you. Good so to everybody, see you. please meet uh, Carrie Ellenwood, the Deputy District Director of the um, for our region in Sacramento. She will give you as much information as she can. So thank you so much, Carrie. You're welcome. Do you want David to go first with the upcoming webinars and such? No, I think if you can go first, and then that way we'll go into the upcoming webinars because we'll do that after as well. Yeah, Carrie, okay. from listening to what um, was discussed already, you might want to talk about the PPP and the first draw and the second draw and the difference between that. Um, that's uh, one thing I think that, you know, th that you can shed some light on too. Yes. Yeah, so thank you, David. One of the um, things that is going on right now with that PPP program, and uh, forgive me if I'm repeating something, but it currently is open only to CFIs. And so a lot of the lenders are not able to access that portal. They are able to take your applications though for the PPP loans. So some of the lenders are taking them right now, some of them aren't. A lot of them are working with their existing customers that participated in the program last time, and they're looking at those um, PPP2 loans. You don't have to do the PPP2 loans um, with your previous lender, although I would encourage you to stay with the, the lender that you work with for your business right now. Um, when you looked for eligibility, eligibility for the PPP2 loan, you would, have, you would have needed to have received that first PPP loan in the first round. And then you will also have the need to have used all those funds already. You don't necessarily have to have applied for that forgiveness yet, but you need to maintain that window of when your PPP loan, your first PPP loan was exhausted. You had your window of time to apply and submit that for forgiveness. That won't affect your ability to apply for the PPP2 if you applied for the first one last time. Some of the rules have changed though for the PPP loans. One of them is you can now know, you can no longer have more than 300 employees. So before it was 500 employees, now it's 300 employees. 
And you also have another criteria to demonstrate that you have had at least a 25% reduction in your gross receipts between comparable quarters in 2019 and 2020. So you, you would have to look at calendar quarters, January, February, March of 2019 versus calendar quarters of January, February, March of 2020. Whichever three months you choose, they need to be in one of those typical annual quarters. So that, that's what I know as of today. Um, and as uh, you're probably gathering, things are on a fast track for changes. Although the leg legislation has been signed, SBA has some timelines of when we need to provide the actual program uh, operational pieces to the small business community, as well as the lenders. So we have been releasing information daily as we receive it on these different programs at the sba.gov slash PPP area of our website. So there you can find the new forms, you can find information on the notices that our lenders receive on how they need to execute these programs, as well as other information as parts of the program roll out. Um, in regard to the um, $10,000 forgivable advances, um, there will be information coming forward on that in terms of who is eligible during this first period of time. So you can look to SBA to uh, communicate with you. If you did not receive the $10,000 the first time, then you may be eligible for additional funds. It's not based on the number of employees at this point, and it is going to require you to submit additional information for that as part of our process to develop less uh, opportunity for inaccurate information to be provided and then make a loan that typically or was not eligible. So please do um, look for that information coming. Um, right now, the only lenders, again, that are eligible to offer the first round of paycheck protection loans and the second round are the CFIs. So there's some information on a definition of those available to you on the website. And those are typically certified development companies that do 504 loans that have uh, agreed to participate in the program. Our micro lenders that are SBA micro lenders have funds that they want to participate in the program with and the CDFIs. So there's a list of those available and I will get that to Alan here shortly um, of the complete state of California CDFIs, depending on where you're located, uh, you could, reach out to them as well. And that is all I have for right now. I don't have a firm date when the lenders can actually submit their applications. There are some uh, people speculating and throwing out dates, but at this point, SBA has not opened the portal to our regular lending community and the banks and credit unions. Stay tuned for that. And of course, uh, uh, the disclosure at the beginning also applies to me. This may change tomorrow, and um, you'll have to just keep your eyes and ears tuned to the sba.gov slash PPP um, for that information. So Carrie, do you have any information, and I don't have much um, of around in regards to the shuttered venue operators uh, and that uh, grant or loan, and somebody stated that they tried to uh, up, um, to get into the webinar for tomorrow and it is full. Will you be having another one? So that, that program is gonna be handled through our disaster, Office of Disaster Assistance. And yes, I just heard that this morning as well. There are no um, openings to join that, which is means there's 20,000 people that have tried to join that program. So um, I don't have the slide deck or what they're gonna be sharing at this point, but as soon as I do get that, I will be sharing it with our resource partners. And I apologize for that filling so quickly. They announced that across the country and uh, there's looks like there's some very interested organizations on uh, that program. That is a grant program. It is for venues. Um, I can look here. 
Well, do you think that will be recorded and we can share the recording? I believe it will be, but I don't quote me on that. I, I'm okay. we're, again, we're not the side of the agency that's executing that, the, okay. the delivery of that information. It will be directly from SBA, I can tell you that. And the information as they get it out to you will be on our website. Um, there Carrie, are some- I, I do have the news release on that that we have received internally. I can um, put that on the chat for you in PDF if you like. Oh, sure, that'd be great, yeah. It's just, I, I don't, they're not gonna be able to join the webinar at this point. Um, okay. But yeah, that way at least they'll have the rest of the information that's been released. And again, um, as we get information here, we will be sending it out to our resource partners, the SBDC, WBCs, and giving you as much as we have as quickly as we can on these programs. It's, uh, it's uh, some of the part of the decision in executing on what the legislation has been written is the timing. There were some time frames in there for us, so we're addressing those items first. And then, um, as Steve mentioned, there will be some uh, deferral of some loan payments for you coming out, and that should be coming out shortly as well. Uh, we have not gotten the direct notices of that information, but we will share them again with you, our resource partners. If you have questions from small businesses, then you will be more uh, apt to have the information correctly to answer them. Perfect. And you know, looking through the, uh, this is David again from the SBA, the uh, PowerPoint presentation, the SBDC Finance Center did, it's very precise and they have extracted the good information because, you know, in the, within the SBA, we get a lot of uh, the big writing, the full blown information, but they were, they did a very good job of taking out the most important parts. So that's really good to see. And, and also, again, I just want to make sure that um, individuals, whether you're a lender, a business owner out there, a consultant out there, that the SBA has a lot of um, resource partners that are also helping in this time. For example, on January 28th, score.org has a data privacy webinar, and it's how, how to help small businesses with cyber crimes and security kind of things. So that's a good thing to take a look at. Also here in Sacramento, the Women's Business Center is has how to do business with the federal government. And it's actually being taught by one of our um, SBA employees that worked with us for quite a number of years, James Aldea. Um, so take a look at the Women's Business Center in your local area, SCORE in your local area. And Lois is on the line, but I have a little plug for her. It's a restaurant survival strategy that she'll be doing uh, coming up on January 21st. Um, so there's a lot of good information with, with our resource partners that again, you know, make sure that you look at the full gamut of the resources that are out there to help uh, individuals get through this. Um, so that's all I have. Uh, back to Sunita, thank you. Perfect, thank you so much. Sorry, trying to answer some questions and multitask, right? That's what we do best here. So this is, if you need information in regards to SBA disaster contact, it is here also on this slide, 800-659-2955. Um, Alan, somebody said that the hyperlink, and I was worried about that, was not working. Um, for me, it does. I have to click onto it. I have to hit control and then click on the link, and then it takes me there. Most of these documents that I have provided for you, uh, they are located at sba.gov. You could just Google the document and it takes you straight there. Or you can- well, we've, uh, I've, I've resent the, uh, the PPP link uh, one out there. I'll put it in chat again. Uh, but there was a challenge with it. So uh, I'll put that out and back into chat right now. So it'll be at the bottom of the chat for anybody who needs it. Thank you very much. And then you can always go to sba.gov for any of the documents that you are looking for. That's where you will find them all. That's where I get them from. Um, let's see here. We're gonna just let you know what we have coming up for uh, upcoming webinars at the Finance Center. Uh, I will go over that really quickly. So this Thursday, our Steve Roth, he is going to be putting on owning and investing in real estate for small business owners and entrepreneurs. That will be on the 14th. Steve, I forget what time is that on. I should put the times on here too. 10.30 to 12. Thank you very much. 10.30 to 12. 
And then when next Wednesday, um, we have another webinar. We're gonna do this all over again. Hopefully we'll have new information. Uh, Case Force will be with us that day too, the Attorney Coalition, mm -hmm. and we'll probably go the 90 minutes because it's a lot of information to get out to everybody. Then Thursday, January 21st, we have expansion capital for existing businesses two years old or more. Steve is also putting that on. So Steve is gonna be very, very busy this month. And that is from 1030 to 12 as well. Guaranteed Wednesday. enough time for everybody. <laughs> no, I've watched it, it's good stuff. Uh, Wednesday, January 27th, uh, we're gonna do COVID updates again. So we're gonna put, I don't think that's in the calendar yet, but it will be. Uh, by the end of day or tomorrow. And then Thursday, January 28th, access capital for startup businesses. And Steve is putting that on again. So I'm gonna switch it over to our regional. Uh, Alan um, is going to tell us what's going on in the region. And the, this is not everything that we have. We have so much to offer, even our local centers. This is just something we do regionally. So oh, yeah, the, the, our, reach, our local centers are doing uh, great guns right now. Literally there's, uh, when I looked the other day, there were close to 75 events being put on by uh, local centers on, on pretty much every topic that is under the sun. Um, but from a, from a regional perspective, we're redoing our, what we do every month. We're doing our, our startup series. So probably not so much of an in, impact for, for, for those folks, but we're starting tomorrow and, uh, and Thursday with uh, starting your business. Uh, that's a two-parter. And then you might, may be useful for everybody, whether if you need to uh, do a pivot plan or uh, if you're starting a new business, how to plan your business. We, we take people through the lean planning canvas, which is really good for if you need to readdress and, and rethink your, your current business planning. Um, finally, I'll, I'll jump to the, the third part of that, which is financing your business, which is how to get uh, money for your new business. Uh, that is uh, very different to what we're talking about here today. Uh, in terms of uh, disaster loans and, and the like. Um, but uh, beyond there, we've got a couple of extra things. So we've got that thing, the, the one that, uh, that David mentioned, which is uh, our own Louise is running this uh, um, late, uh, strat survival strategies for restaurants. That's, uh, that's uh, next week, I think, uh, I think next Thursday. My God, time's flying uh, in the afternoon. Uh, the following Wednesday, uh, Chana Anderson, who's our HR advisor, will be letting you know all those things that have come up on HR that are new for 2021. And uh, right at the beginning of uh, February, we've also got our own one on cybersecurity basics, uh, which is what you need to know to protect yourself and your business against cyber criminals. So uh, that's that. Uh, you can find all that content on our network calendar. You can also find access to most of our, a, lot, a whole bunch of our uh, on-demand webinars where you can review them uh, at your leisure. There's 20 or so there where we're having a whole bunch of people. We're continually adding to that. Uh, so have a look at that at learn.norcalsbdc.org uh, and uh, get the learning you need from there. All right, Tanita, back to you. Thank you very much. So let's go to the Q&A. We have been answering, Steve has done an incredible job answering 85 questions already. I did dismiss some because we have answered them already. They're looking for the application for 150 and under. Some people are correcting me in regards to what my slide said for the payment protection or payroll protection. I apologize. It's a mistake, so thanks. Um, but let's uh, move on and let's answer some questions. Uh, let's see here. There was one in regards to, and I don't know the, uh, the answer to this, and I don't know if we'll have the answer to this, but Carrie, uh, Debbie is asking, do you have uh, any, anything regarding the, any more information regarding the shuttered venue operations? Is it true you can't apply for the SVO and the PPP? I believe, let me see. Um... Uh, this is Louise. Yes, that's correct. You cannot. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Let's see here. To confirm, EM is asking to confirm the additional items that can be forgiven for PPP2 retro, re retroactively applied to PPP1. Uh, and that is if you haven't already been forgiven. That is correct, EM. If you received round one PPP, do you suggest applying for forgiveness um, before applying for PPP round two? 
Um, Michelle, you don't have to be forgiven yet. You right. just have to have spent all of those funds uh, appropriately. So of course, you know, we went over the 60, 40, so you don't have to have gotten the um, forgiveness yet. You just had to have spent the money down already. Let's see here. Is there an idle round two? I received idle funds in 2020. Can I apply for more money? So you can't, the, the idle program has been extended until December 31st of 2021. You can go in and ask for reconsideration on your previous idle loan and they will take a look at that for you, but they're also going to be requiring more documentation than they did previously. So be, be prepared that they, they will ask you uh, for your tax returns. Uh, in some cases, they're going to want more details on your financials. So you can still uh, access that program, but there are going to be a few more uh, pieces of information required. And, and speaking of the idle program, there have been some cases of fraud. I'm sure you've heard about this in the news. And one of the things that SBA is doing to individual or doing for individuals that think they might have experienced that fraud. So let's say all of a sudden you started getting a, a loan payment coupon for a loan you didn't take out and you call SBA, they're going to send you an affidavit that you'll need to complete. You'll need to also send in the uh, a photo ID and you'll want to also send them your police report or if you submitted it to the OIG, those reports. With those three things, SBA will then begin the process of unwinding that loan against uh, your business and your credit. So that's gonna be a process. You can always call the um, 800 number and find out more about that. And if you have a idle loan that is in process, um, there, there's been millions of these loans requested. The portal has been filling them out as best they can. Or people have been applying and people have been trying to process them here at SBA as best we can. We are still working through that. So please do be patient and um, you know, continue to either email or call the 800 number. Now, in your reconsideration applications, if, if you have want to have more funds, you will need to, to fill out that, that information that's requested. There's gonna be a little more than the first time. Thank you, Sunita. Thank you, Carrie. Is there a maximum loan amount that you can request? So if you've already received $150,000, can you get more? Yes, you can. Um, I believe that it's gonna go back to the typical um, idle disaster loan amount of up to the 2 million, but I'm not 100% sure on that. We have not received that additional guidance. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So Steve, there's some directed directly to you. I'm sure you answered a question and they'll probably have a question to your question to your answer to your question. <laughs> so I'm gonna let you uh, look at those and then I'll just go to the newer questions and then I'll try, we'll go back skip to those. Over, skip okay. over the stuff, I'll get to it. Perfect, thank you very much. Uh, so let's see here. Jenny is asking, second PPP, I saw an article that points people to a portal to help applicants find the community lenders. Should we advise clients to work with their banks first or seek community lenders because some of the banks with the big banks uh, like Chase and B of A? So I would be, uh, if you're looking for information about these programs at SBA, I would be cautious about uh, articles or speculations, I would really encourage you to go to the sba.gov slash PPP. In regard to your question, um, you can go to whichever lender you select for your second round of PPP. But if you have a relationship with an existing lender, then go back to that lender. Currently, as I stated earlier, right now, the only organizations that are able to process these PPP loans are the CFIs. So I have a list of those in California and I'm going to get that on the chat here in just a minute. Yeah, sure. and Jenny, we don't know who um, is sending that information out. Are they gonna charge those clients? This, exactly. this should be for free. So 
Um, I would check out that portal first before you advise anybody that uh, you're advising to use it, because I don't know of a portal except for sba.gov. Um, and they have a lender match, but that's not necessarily what you're going to need. You're going to need the list. Um, right. And hopefully they will update uh, their list, I'm sorry, their websites to let us know that they're ready to go on PPP. We have checked a couple of websites or Kyle Roseman with our group did yesterday and he was not able to find anybody accepting yet. But that does not mean by next week that they won't. They needed some time to get it together because you know, they were told on Friday that they can do this and maybe they just weren't set up for it yet. So they just need a little bit of time to get it set up. And if you've been us, with us before, you understand that SBA and the lenders need a little bit more time after the law has been um, you know, signed, it, signed in. The point about idle advance not counted against PPP forgiveness, is that true for PPP one also? That's correct, that's, that, that's for all PPP. So if you already received your initial PPP loan um, and you also received an advance, if you already have uh, forgiveness and that advance turned into a loan, I'm not sure how that's gonna be rewound or worked out yet. We're waiting for guidance on that, but correct, that should not be turned into a loan. Um, that should be just forgiven. Can we just apply for idle advance, not idle loan? So the way the idle advance is going to be applied is, as Sunita mentioned earlier, first, those small businesses that are determined to be in a low income area will be the first ones that SBA will go back to and, and request, you know, are you interested in these funds? You know, here's what you need to do. We don't have right now any guidance specifically on that. I, I think it will be structured as to how they release the funds that were allocated for those idle advances. So stay tuned, we'll get some more information soon for you. Thank you. You're welcome. So Elizabeth is stating, assuming we get PPP2, how do we deal with employees who have not worked since March of 2020? Uh, out staff who has not worked since March, have children out of school and no childcare. Steve Roth. Um, yeah, yeah, just like Steve said, so focus is on your current employees. If people are not coming back, you're, you know, because of childcare or things like that, that part portion can be forgiven, but you have to document that you said to, you know, you offered me my job back and I said, I can't come back to work because I have to take care of my children. You need to have documentation of that. So that way that can be used for your forgiveness portion when it's time to go back for forgiveness because they're looking at that you try to keep all of your employees. You can hire other people to take their place. So that's another thing, Elizabeth, you can hire others to take the place of uh, that person, me, who couldn't come back to work. So you can hire somebody else to take my place. Uh, let's see here. Can I get PPP if I am a sole prop and how do I figure out my own salary? Hillary, yes, you can. Um, and the document is on sba.gov on how to calculate your, um, your loan amount. And if you want to reach out to us, you can reach out to us at this number and also at Ask SBDC. You can get, um, if you're not already a client, you can sign up for no cost advising and your local center will reach out to you to assist you with that. But that document is at sba.gov. I do apologize that my hyperlinks that I thought were super cool are not working for some. Um, I apologize for that. I'll just possibly go old school next time. Let's see here. Alex, if we have two addresses we could potentially use for our business for idle, and one address qualifies for the 10,000 advance, but the other doesn't, and we have already provided the address that doesn't, sorry, can we update the address to the one that does? How to update, thanks. Well, for the idle program, you will need to go into that idle application part of the system. 
I think to update addresses though, you're gonna to need to call the customer service number and or the customer service email to make that correction. Thank you. And then I will, let me see if I can go backwards on the slides to give that. So that's the, that's the information that you're looking for, Alex. Um, Renee saying, I am a travel agency owner. Our travel supply, sorry, suppliers considered covered supplier costs. Uh, I don't believe that that is correct. Um, I, I'm not sure exactly what you're talking about. I, know, I would need to, you to provide a list of what it is because uh, I'm not exactly sure what travel suppliers um, covered would be uh, for the additional. So reach out to us um, at 833-ASK-SBDC or to your local center as well. And you can get to your local center through the 833 number so that we can help you with that. Can you address second PPP such how to apply and documents required? You would, Steve, you would have to apply with a, a lender. So that's the list that we're gonna try and give you. Uh, Carrie is gonna put it in the chat. We don't know if all of them are accepting ap applications at this time. If you have your first, um, you know, say you uh, got your first loan through Chase or through Five Star Bank or Lendistry, an online um, lender, then you can go back to them. We just don't know when they'll be able to submit their application request for PPP2. Um, but and the, the form is on the website. Oh, I'm sorry, Sunita. No, that's okay. Yeah, sorry. And the form is in the website. It's also in my um, in in this presentation as well. But all the forms are at sba.gov PPP. And, and in, in regard to the the lenders, the banks and credit unions, they have not got access to our portal, but that does not mean that you can work with them and submit that application with them. The list that I um, provided to Alan is the list of the CFIs in California, um, not the PPP lenders. That list is on the sba.gov website of those lenders that are participating in the program. Thank you. I'm gonna try and get uh, that list and also uh, information on the, sh the, the shattered piece that I just got sent. Uh, I'm gonna try and get those uh, links to those for everyone to download uh, before the, the next 25 minutes. I'm working on it. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. Yes, and if we don't, if we, you know, we'll try and um, get the link to our website. So you could go to norcalsbdc.org or assbdc.com and we will have links as soon as we get it. Uh, we will put that on our websites as well. So that way you can get that information. Will year end payroll summary suffice for payroll form proof? Um, it depends on it depends on what, uh, you know, so are you saying for forgiveness, Alicia? Um, it would need, if it if it shows within the 24 weeks, so we're, that's what they're really looking for is the eight weeks or the 24 weeks, how you spent that money during that time. Um, that's what they're looking for in that specific amount of time. So I don't believe that the year end is going to suffice unless you receive the funds towards the end and that was your 24 weeks. Uh, and no, you didn't work during the first uh half of the of the year and also Sunita to let everybody know we have approved of the forgiveness applications that have come into the agency we have approved 80 percent of those applications for forgiveness submitted without any adjustments so uh, you you and your lenders have done a great job putting those forgiveness applications together. I'm sure the SBDC Finance Center also had something to do with that, but uh, very good job. You, you're doing great out there. So don't be concerned about your forgiveness so much. It may take us a little while, but the results are very favorable for our small business communities. Thank you, Carrie. So that means that the lenders know what they're doing. So whatever they are accepting or advising you to provide, then that means yes. that it is getting forgiven. So I guess the best person to reach out to in regards to that is your lender. Fine. And I know every, there's people gonna start telling me that some lenders have not um, 
have not reached out to them. They're not accepting it yet. And I believe it's because they're waiting for the 150 and under. So um, uh, the application for forgiveness. So just hang on, but just try and get gather as many documents as you can. Alicia was asking, is a 941 okay? Yes, 941 is great. I don't put that form down anymore because everyone says, I don't have a 941. How else do I do it? Whatever proof that you can prove during those months, payroll, you know, um, the bank statements, whatever it is showing that you've paid, you know, canceled checks, um, something, a ledger, letting you letting SBA know that you spent the money uh, correctly and letting the lender know you spent the money correctly. Toby's asking, how do you document the 25% reduction in any quarter in 2020 and 2020, uh, in the 2019 and 2020? Profit and loss statement. Sorry, I did answer the question. I wrote it, the last one, but it looks like this one's coming up a lot. People are confused. You can use your profit and loss statement, but it has to be for that quarter. So for 2019, use your profit and loss statement. For the second quarter, for 2020, you have to use your statement for the second quarter. So that way it matches up so you can show that there's the 25% reduction. If it's a 24% reduction, unfortunately, that's not going to be um, sufficient. It has to be 25 or more. Here. Sorry, I'm trying to clear this out as well because we answered. Um, Sunita, were there any questions about the idle being deducted from the paycheck protection amounts? The advance, yeah, we, we, yeah, we did go over that. Okay. okay. But we're still not sure how, if somebody has been forgiven already, how that's going to work out. Or, or did they forgive? I, I don't know. Did was it all? Was it just forgiven? The grant amount? It should have been. So, in, in the way the original legislation was written, it looked like the lender needed to deduct that advance. Excuse Correct. me. <clears throat> and what what the new legislation does is recall that. So, if you received a paycheck protection loan from your lender, and they took out whatever your idle advance was. What SBA is doing now is we're doing a, a corrective action with the lender. So let's say you had a $100,000 uh, PPP loan and they took off the $10,000 from your idle advance. Now what's gonna happen is SBA is gonna um, uh, reconcile that with the lender and the lender will be able to get those funds back to you to take away any loan that you would have had based on that advance. So let's say you, you had the $100,000 PPP, they took off the $10,000 and now you have a 1% loan sitting out there for $10,000. What SBA and the lender are gonna do is reconcile that and then you will receive the $10,000 and that loan will be paid off so you won't have that outstanding any longer. Depending on the amount of your Advance. So I'm not saying it's all going to be 10,000, but whatever your advance amount was that was deducted and left for you as a loan will be brought back to the lender fr from SBA. We'll bring it back to the lender and pay that off for you. Thank you. You're welcome. Trying to multitask again, sorry. Um, okay, let's see here. Linda is asking, she's part of our team, cautions. Also, one of my clients was scammed by someone who offered to fill out the application for them, but they had the $45,000 routed to their own bank account and have not been able to get it back. So please, if somebody is, unless they're with the SBDC or technical, technical advisor, that is listed. I don't know if you have all the TAs listed on your website or not, Carrie. Um, they should all be there, yeah. So we're all listed there. Those are the approved people that can help you and there should be no cost. Um, you are signing your own documents. We are not completing the documents for you. Uh, you are responsible for that information. We can tell you where the information should go, but if somebody's doing it for you, then you should wonder, um, is this correct or not? I am so sorry that that person, Linda, had this experience. Uh, hopefully the disaster or someone there is able to assist. I, I don't know if they can maybe find that bank account. 
So uh, what they'll need to do is there's some information on idle fraud on our website. And if they go through those steps of filing the report um, and then providing, uh, letting SBA know, we'll provide you with the affidavit and then a photo ID back to SBA, then they will start to work on that process for you. And the OIG will also get engaged with that. And unfortunately, we just have to really let everybody know to be very cautious because sometimes during these times, there are people that figure a way to, to scam the system. Yeah, and it's very unfortunate because I know, the, you know, this is something, yeah. this is people's lifeline right here, this money. Yes. Let's see here. Raul, I did not apply for PPP first round or were declined. Is that reopen to reapply? You would need to talk to the lender or why were you declined? Um, there might be a reason. You should talk to one of uh, us here at SBDC or somebody else that can provide you with some uh, more information. We need to look into why you were declined to find out if you can apply again. So, and who is the lender that you applied with? What information did they give you? The reasoning for um, you not being able to get approved. But if you could get over that hurdle, yes, you can apply. Um, Joan is asking, do you have any information how to increase the loan amount if you have a first draw loan and didn't get as much as you could qualify for? Joan, they would have to go back to uh, Recon, um, the email address that was previously. That's where they would ask for the more money yes. and they would have to provide all of their financials to the reconsideration group. Um, I haven't seen anything go over 150, but who knows with the new um, legislation or new things, let's try it. Let's see if that's possible or not. And let me know if that ends up getting approved. Um, Alex, if we have two addresses, oh, do, do we already go through this? Yes. Sorry. Um, FYI, it was confusing because the email said this was for the grant, California grant. Sorry, Hugh. Yeah, we're not talking about the California grant here because it does take up a lot of time, unfortunately, but the other, there is another webinar. Uh, I believe Alan has put it in a couple of times. I'm sorry that the email address or the address is bringing you back here, but it should be a Fullerton webinar. Uh, yeah, back in the, in the chat. Thank you, Alan. Uh, I'm assuming, did, uh, did she say you have to have applied for forgiveness of the first round PPP before? No, you do not have to apply for forgiveness of PPP one first round to apply for the second round. You had to have spent yes. all the money. You have to spend all the money, should have spent it correctly as well. So the allowed 60, 40, or 100% for payroll. Um, if our line 31 on Schedule C is negative number of 2019, then we would not be eligible for PPP, correct? That's correct, Tina. There are no add backs. Um, so if you're Schedule C, that's what it goes off. Two and a half percent of that is still a negative number. <laughs> um, Esperanza, I am sorry. I know this is for PPP. Um, sorry, Esperanza, I can't help you with the um, that. Uh, you would have to call Lendistry. I, let me see if I can, if I stop share. Sorry, I can't get into. Steve, if you want to go on, I'll try to get this person the Lendistry information. And then somebody also texts me, is this, are we maxed out on um, participants today, Alan? No, we're not. Okay, thank you. So Alan, uh, sorry, do you want to ask the next question, Alan? So, uh, which one? Sorry, I was um, involved in a whole bunch of other stuff. Esperanza's, I'm going to help. If you want to go to, uh, to Brandy, uh, I think that one is also Esperanza. Uh, okay, so all of these, sorry. So I think it's Iana. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, Sunita, I was kind of tied up on something else. What is it you're asking me to do? 
can you answer the question? Can you help uh, with the questions right now? I'm going to sure. try and get Lendistry's information for everybody because okay. there's a lot of people asking about them. So the, the top one that's sitting there, it says, if I got an I, it's from Yana, which is if I got an idle grant of a thousand dollars, does it affect my affect me to apply for the PPP? Do I need to deduct the thousand dollars that's no. in the PPP amount? No. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, next one up, uh, it's from Esperanza. I'm sorry, I'll, I know this is for PPP. Getting, uh, Esperanza, yeah, Esperanza, I'll take care of, and anybody else that is looking for Lendistry. So. Sunita, I keep seeing it come up in either the chat or the Q&A, some Lendistry contact information. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, so that is our Esperanza. Please go to the chat and the Lendistry info is there. So please go there, try calling them. They are open until 11 p.m. tonight. So please go there. Anybody that has that needs um, help with that, please um, go there and, uh, and try to get somebody live or email them, please. Um, we, um, that's all the information I have for you at this point in time for Lendistry is just their call in. So it's in the chat. Thank you so much, Carrie. I appreciate that. So sure. yeah, Miriam's uh, Miriam's put that in the chat for us. Thank you so much, Miriam. Thank um, you, thank you. I, we've had a few people like trying to throw questions in the chat. Please put your questions in the Q and A. Otherwise, uh, they're never going to get answered. So uh, we're trying to manage two streams. So okay, I've, I've got it. I'll jump back in again, Alan. Thank you. Okay. So Sandra, are you able to apply for the PPP one time, uh, first time as a sole prop? Uh, if currently receiving EDD from W-2 income for a part-time job in 19. Both sole prop and part-time employment were in place in 2019 with either in 20. Thanks. Sandra, yes, you can apply for PPP for your sole prop. You can definitely do that. You cannot use, this is the caveat though, so you can't have EDD money paying you your um, your wages and the PPP money at the same time. So you have to use the money at different times. That's the only thing. With any of these disaster loans, you can't use it at the same time. So you can't use the same money at, for the same purposes. So idle, you can't pay payroll with idle until you exhaust your, your PPP. Then you can start using your idle. But yes, you can apply. Uh, Sandra, clarification, no income with sole prop, but still in place. Um, sorry, I'm not, I'm not sure. I, I don't know what the first question was or what this is relating to. I apologize. Uh, current second round of PPP, not forgiveness. Sorry, if, if um, it's hard, we were answering, we've answered 157 questions. Um, it's hard to relate what your other question was unless you put it in underneath so we can kind of follow along. So I apologize for that. I, I don't know. Um, Alicia, thank you so much. I appreciate the kind words that you are giving to all of us. Uh, we're working very hard for you. Um, we do have uh, advisors that know as much more than me that would be happy to help and just give us a call at 833-ASS-SBDC or better yet, uh, go to ASS-SBDC and we will route you to the correct person. So happy to help anytime we can. Thank you so much, Alicia. Let's see here, Michelle, can you clarify the difference between the idle loan and the 10K, I'm assuming idle advance that people receive that does not need to be repaid? Also, how does a sole prop apply for idle 10K? Thank you. So Michelle, we went over that in depth in the slides and I would ask you to go back into the deck or into the slides and review that because it's a lot of information. Now the 10K is the advance. You may or may not qualify for the advance unless you are in a low income, I believe economic area. Um, and what that specific, where those specific areas are, unfortunately, I don't have a list for that. And we're hoping that SBA or one of our um, other providers will be able to put something up. Maybe uh, one of the other nonprofits already has something on their website. If I find it, I will give it to everybody next week as well. I'll be on the hunt for that. 
and at SBA, maybe we can all work together and try and figure that out to make it easier. Because I know it's not easy to find that information. So sorry about that. And so for a sole prop, I kind of answered that you may or may not qualify for that grant for that advance. So there is a loan, idle loan, and then there is an idle advance. And they are two different things. The idle advance is a grant or a forgivable loan, which we used to say, but it is a grant that will be forgiven. Steve, in the case why they told me, sorry, in this case, why they told me when I had PPP, I cannot have idle $10,000 grant. Can I apply for idle 10,000 grant and then apply second PPP? You can try to apply for their grant. Um, they will check to see if you're in those specific areas, but it can't go retro back to what the, what the rules were before. So the right. rules are different for the advance now. So if you um, if you know you check all those boxes for the advance, then yes, then you can definitely apply for it. I don't believe that the portal for that is open yet, but I'm not I'm not, not sure. So it's, it's not, not open, open yet. <laughs> okay. So when it is, we'll let you know um, and apply for the second PPP. Yes, you can apply for the second PPP. Also, if you check all those boxes, Steve. Fernando PPP, I am a sole prop and receive $14,000 loan, uh, loan, okay. But during the 24 week period, I only use 10K. Can I use the remaining balance toward PPP too? So if you already have a PPP loan and you have the balance remaining, you should spend it. They're not gonna give you a PPP two loan. Um, Correct. Unless you gave that money back. I, I don't really know, Fernando. You kind of have to explain it a little bit more for us because it's a little confusing. Um, if you gave the money back, you would then, and you spent all the money that you did have, then yes, you would have to apply for a PPP two. You wouldn't automatically get that $10,000 back. You would have to apply for a new PPP loan. And then you would also have to check the boxes to make sure that you qualify for the new PPP2 loan with a 25% reduction. Lori, Carrie, what if the client paid the amount off so there's no outstanding PPP balance? Will the lender refund the client the amount of the advance they were entitled to? Yes. So if they had a PPP loan, they paid that back and the lender had deducted their idle advance, they're, the borrower will get those funds back. It's gonna come back through your lender. Perfect, thank you. So You're we welcome. have about four minutes left and we're gonna try and answer as many questions as we can. We have 18 or 17 left. We will have another webinar next Wednesday. We will have more information, hopefully yeah. then, but we'll try and answer as many as we can before we leave today. Uh, Alicia, one last question, borrower owner documents, one articles of incorporation for S Corp business license or one of the other including drug. Alicia, this is a grant question. Um, please go to Lendistry, but yes, those should all work, your driver's license and passport. Uh, let's see here. Wendy, I received 11,000 on December 30th. Is 10,000 still grant a grant worthy or is this a loan only? If you sign loan documents, it is a loan. Right. So unfortunately, so, the law did not go into effect. I don't know if it went into effect on the 30th or not. I it was that, yeah, I think it was the 27th. But um, again, we're working through that process. I'm not clear if she's saying that she had a $10,000 grant or a $10,000 loan, because if it was an idle loan, then it will be a loan that needs to be repaid. If it was a grant, then that would be the part that's forgiven. I'm not clear on the question. Okay. Getting, getting called out here. So uh, uh, Cindy saying, um, and Steve, you were saying that they can't use their Q4 2019 and 2020. Is that correct? I didn't see anything that eliminated that and maybe I just overlooked it for their profit and loss statement. You're, you're on mute, Steve. I'm muted. 
So Cindy's saying that I said you can use any uh, quarter in 2019 and 2020, and you're stating, did you state that we can't use Q4 for some reason? You can't, from what I saw, Q4 is not on the list. Oh, okay. It's one, two, or three. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, sorry, Cindy. Uh, sorry that I, I, I honestly didn't see that. So Steve saw that on the list. So it's just the first, second, and third quarters. Um, can we provide a website to apply for a second round PPP? Steve, we don't have the list of uh, lenders right now that are, but we, uh, I believe in the chat, we provided you with all the CFI lenders in California. You would have to check with them if they are ready to um, start processing the PPP to... Um, Anita, we should point out that, that large banks are not CFIs. Correct. The law was passed in such a way that in order to make sure more money got to smaller businesses, smaller lenders who typically work with smaller businesses were the first ones to access the program. So if you're working with Wells Fargo Bank, Bank of America, JP Morgan Chase, they're banks, they're not CFIs. Correct. CFIs are community financial institutions. And so they're gonna be smaller organizations that work with micro, through micro loans and opportunity fund uh, and others would be part of it. So if you got a loan from US Bank, Bank of America, Chase, Citibank, Wells Fargo Bank, they're in the second round when the application moves to larger financial institutions. So Correct. don't worry about it. They're not CFIs. You won't find Wells Fargo on the CFI list because they aren't one. Correct. And, and the reason that the law and legislation was written that way is to make sure that there was an opportunity for the smaller institutions to reach out to the smaller borrowers, borrowers in those lower economic areas and minority owned businesses that typically um, aren't dealing with the larger banks. When the legislators looked at the situation, they wanted to make sure our very smallest borrowers and those borrowers that have uh, more challenged areas to have access to capital have a really good opportunity to do that. We do not have a date when the large banks will have access to our portal, but as soon as that happens, it will be announced on our website. So again, if you go to the sba.gov slash PPP, that's where you, you will see that information of when your larger institutions are eligible to start issuing these loans. And again, keep in touch with your banker because it will save you some time if they've already got your information from the first round, that'll save you a little bit of time there. And Carrie, I saw something in the chat that from, uh, from one of our regulars who was saying his bank, which is a fairly small bank, but it's not a CFI, is collecting information in advance. So your bank may well be doing that. Yes. Uh, and have that information ready for when the when they when the portal's ready to go. So if you like your bank and they do that sort of thing, it's worth doing that. Yes. That's correct. And obviously, you know, as soon as that information becomes available, we'll get it out uh, through our channels as well to everybody. So you'll you'll get that information. Perfect. Thank you so much. Sorry I had to stop my um, video because I'm having some internet issues right now. Um, but I did want to let everybody know it is 12, a little after 12, and we've answered all the questions that we can right now. I think a lot of them that are left are in regards to the, um, the grant. Um, we've answered a lot of these questions a couple of times already, and it's also in the video. So please review the video or the recording again to get some of these questions answered. We will be back next Wednesday to go over all of this again. We thank you so much for your time. We thank you for visiting us um, every Wednesday. It's been for quite a while, quite a while, 74 weeks. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you so much to Carrie, to Steve, to Alan, Louise, David, and Bree for being here today, assisting, and we will see you next Wednesday. Thank you so much. Thanks, Bye. everybody. Bye. Goodbye, all. Bye-bye.